Honest cops off Reddit. How do you put up with corrupt and punk cops? 6 years experience here. For me personally, probably the first year of law enforcement was the hardest for me, because I worked in a very small town, with a bunch of old school officers. I wouldn't say I've seen a lot of corrupt cops, but punk cops, yeah I've worked with my share of those. But back to what I was saying, my first year I was very apprehensive about saying anything if I thought someone was going overboard, and I will even admit, I used to lose my temper at the drop of a hat and was one of those butthole cops. What put everything into perspective for me, was during my second year, I watched my sergeant, at the, the time, cuss, berate, and treat a mentally handicapped individual like a dog. We had neighbors at nearby houses coming out on the porch and witnessing this happen and I couldn't hold my tongue. I got in the middle of the argument and told my SGT to cool off. I handled the rest of this certain situation myself and when we got back to the PD, we got into a huge argument over how it was handled. Got bad enough the chief was called to the department and as I saw previously, I went on the record against this SGT and in the end he was demoted after the parents made the complaint. The last few years, I became a chief in a small town. I made it a point to make my officers wear body cameras. That way, if a complaint is made and it is valid, I can take punitive measures from there. I also make it a point to train my new officers on how to treat people and handle situations. Anyone who is in law enforcement knows, you can't be nice to everyone. In my opinion, the best tool an officer has at his disposal is verbal judo as it is called some places. Most situations can be diffused if you treat people with respect. We deal with people at their worst in most incidents and most times they want someone to vent to. In closing, a quote my father told me when I got into in law enforcement is this, you have to know when to turn it on and when to turn it off. But you have to always stay level headed and treat people with respect. Most of the time, you'll get in return. Not in law enforcement but I completely agree with your decisions to train your officers how to handle their emotions and use it words to work out a situation. Treating someone like trash no matter how guilty they are won't help you or them resolve anything. As a rookie, my dad was a beat cop in NYC in the 1970s, Serpico era. He said corruption was so ingrained that you couldn't avoid it. If you walked into a business they'd start handing you goods, like it's a protection racket, and if you didn't take it they'd get nervous and think you were bargaining for more. He couldn't take it, so transferred to the emergency service unit, SWAT team, which gets called into special situations and didn't have that dynamic. Thank you for sharing and hope dad is doing well. 10 years in corrections so this may not be the angle you want, but it has some similar truths. Law enforcement is generally going to attract a lot of alpha personalities and also a lot of people who were pushed around and want to empower themselves. You then get the rest sprinkled in. The alphas who want to solve everything with brute force and subvert their agency's policies and the law do so by being alphas and getting other officers who otherwise would not behave this way on their own to lie on their behalf. You now have one or two A types with a gang of admirers running things, because combined they outnumber the guy who is just doing his job. You have leadership who isn't interested as long as the paperwork lines up to protect from lawsuits and is probably an A type themselves. The honest answer to how I dealt with this, I compromised my integrity for years. Years of complicity that still bother me even after I've left the job. Then I got trainer certification, seniority and supervisor roles and I started teaching every new body coming through the door that if they came here to bounce someone's face off a wall they needed to find a new job. That middle personality doesn't seem to need to find a group. I don't think we naturally gravitate towards one extreme or another, so I created an us versus them mentality from day one for new officers. The boogeyman for them wasn't the inmate, it was the big dude wearing the same uniform as you that was going to make you stress out every night. And it's true. Don't know who else can relate but 99.9% .9 of what made my life miserable at work were co-workers. I actually liked inmates and hated officers by the time I was done. Not proud of my answer but it's probably pretty common. You just have to wait it out if you want to keep your job. I'm 71 and greatly appreciate you being brutally honest about your feelings and experiences and taking the time to answer this question though I'm not the one who posted it. You're a credit to the human race and I'm proud to share this planet with you. My friend Tom was a 20 year corrections officer in mass. God bless. 
I don't know about other agencies, but where I work about 85% of IAD complaints are generated by fellow cops, often anonymously. When IAD investigate someone, they look for absolutely everything, not just the topic at the center of the complaint. We are usually able to weed bad cops out internally before they do something too stupid in public. Usually. That's good. Cop for almost 10 years and worked for two different departments. I've seen three instances of an abuse of power, one being excessive force. I went on record against this officer, my superior, and he was placed on leave and resigned a few days after. Eventually he was charged and plead to three felonies for the excessive force. One of the others was an officer charging someone for assaulting him with a bottle. I went on record and the charges were dropped and the office was fired. This was an awful experience for the victim. I actually went to my superior that night to address the issue immediately and was not taken seriously so I walked into the chief's office the next day which sparked a full investigation. The third was releasing information to the public about open investigations for personal reasons. Not as big a deal as the others but he was also suspended. Moral of the story is that I got into this job to protect the ones that couldn't protect themselves. I've never experienced the blue line which is often referenced on reddit but I'm sure it exists in some places. I've only been praised for my honesty and integrity. Frick, we need more like you. I always tell my wife there are great Leos out there, but the news is gonna post the bad ones all over TV. Always look for the ones doing right. Verified on our protect and serve. The most common thing we run into is general incompetence lack of overall tact. We have cops that believe they are righteous Christians and police work is their calling and will take every 20 year old college student with a joint and digital scale to jail to start with their reformation process. We have cops that champions of justice and want to break down systematic injustice from the inside and could catch someone red handed robbing a bank at gunpoint and would rather take them to McDonald's for a meal and try to solve the issues that made the person get into crime in the first place. We have cops that enjoy the nightlife and want to be VIPs so they tip off club promoters about potential raids or liquor license inspections and exchange get VIP treatment on a Saturday night with no cover charge. We have cops that are for whatever reason just incompetent and just misunderstand the law. This goes both ways sometimes you have cops that think probable cause is a much lower standard than it is. Others who believe it is a much higher standard than it really is. Ultimately you try to help and coach people into doing better, much like anyone would at any job. But the really bad illegal stuff that makes the news, like cops planting evidence or the sexual favors or the bribes, don't happen as much as people would like to believe. It's not that this stuff isn't out there, but usually those people, like most criminals, slip up and get caught, and are dealt with accordingly. It must be an oddly punitive form of Christianity if the Christians are the ones who want to send people to jail. You'd expect the Christians to be the ones taking criminals to McDonald's and trying to help them. Grace, forgiveness, compassion, turning the other cheek, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them, etc. Dispatcher here, where I work, bad cops don't last long, not sure how it works in the US, but where I work. If you have any knowledge to a officer's doing something wrong illegal and he she is found out, you are considered just as guilty and punished alongside them. Also, no one likes a lazy cop. If you only take easy calls, and only like 3 calls per day, you are a lazy piece of crap and everyone knows. Sounds like the West Point honor code. I've been a law enforcement officer for 3 years. I work in a village of 4500 people. And honestly I just do my job. My brother passed away 2 years ago from drugs and alcohol. My brother fought with a lot of demons through his life and while I was employed with my department my brother caught a felony charge of battery to a law enforcement officer. The cop who charged him I've never seen eye to eye with and just last year he was terminated for setting up a drug buy that was botched. But to the point of the question is simple. There are buttholes in every single profession and the difference with law enforcement is you can ruin someone's life by not doing your job properly. We have a good crew working for this department and our every move is documented by bodies cams. Sure this profession attracts some crooked people who don't want to help and love the power. But if I find those people ever working in our department I will do everything in my power to make sure they get dealt with according to the law. I'd like to know the story behind this botched drug buy. Police officer here. Verified in our protect and serve. 
I report all the facts as I honestly observe them in my report so that the truth becomes part of the public record. Having a bodicum helps greatly in this respect. If it becomes an issue of safety or something flagrant, I'll immediately step in on scene to stop it. I'm happy to answer questions or hypothetical scenarios. I'm not from the US. And where I'm from, Singapore, corruption is hit pretty hard from the ground up. I don't know if it's a cultural thing, or if we just have that much more robust of an accountability system, or if it's a mixture of both, but that's just how it is. It's not just management level guys who give a crap, or task forces who are paid to give a crap. You hear a lot of stories of ground level beat cops ratting out their own friends without any duress. I wasn't in the force for long, so I didn't personally encounter any corrupt cops myself, but the rare few who didn't play it safe enough and got caught really got hit hard. We're talking fired and sent to jail with maximum years and fine. Stuff like smuggling cigarettes by way of the sea, or using their knowledge of their jurisdictions to set up shady side businesses, gambling dens and crap or using any police powers they have for personal gain, searching up personal info of people for reasons other than investigations. The moment they get caught they're pretty much 100% fricked. One thing that really stood out to me was the difference between cops here in Singapore and right across the border in Malaysia. In Malaysia they set up speed traps and half the time they book you for unfair reasons, and all you have to do is slip them a paltry sum of money that way cheaper than the actual fine and go on your way. In Singapore cops almost never accept bribes, we're scared as crap of the consequences so even if you slipped a thousand dollars over we'd almost all just arrest you for trying to bribe an officer. As an example of how different both forces are, my friends and I took a day trip across the border one weekend. And we got hit by a speed trap. My friend was gonna slip the Malaysian cop some cash. But then the cop noticed that we were cops too and he turned pale. Handed the money back and played it by the book. Apparently they're okay with corruption on their end but they don't wanna get their hands dirty with Singapore's relatively straight laced police. Which I guess is a reassuring indication that even if some corruption does slip through the cracks. We don't systemically support it. Probably because Singapore can pay their cops decent money as opposed to Malaysia. Turkey had the same problem but I heard things are changing. I work for a department in the Midwest that has somewhere between 300-350 certified personnel. Our agency has a zero tolerance policy against lying and has quickly fired folks for illegal behavior. I'm very fortunate that I work with true professionals that care about the people we work for. I feel that most other agencies around us are the same way. If it's determined someone is doing something illegal, they are fired. Period. Not a cop. But I worked with a federal law enforcement officer for about a year while he was on leave from his job due to a major knee injury. He worked part time at my rec center so he'd have free access to the gym. He lived with family in the area during this time and didn't have access to the gym his department building had and something to do during the day. Great guy. For those that don't know, federal law enforcement agencies, like the FBI and federal marshals, I won't disclose what agency he was with, but he wasn't an investigator. He was one of the guys wearing body armor going in with an assault rifle, kicking in doors. Super cool guy with great stories. I asked him pretty much this question, and he told me something like this. Paraphrasing, of course. Basically, in any job or team, there's going to be people who are selfish and willing to hurt people around them or forego common decency to come out ahead. Any workplace, any group is going to have these people. The problem with law enforcement is that it attracts these people. A position of power like that is a big gold nugget dangling in front of these selfish, amoral personality types. The more powerful a position is, the more likely it'll have someone like that there. What's the difference between a cop's personality and a CEO's personality? The cop was too dumb to run a business. So you have these borderline sociopathic personalities, who aren't smart enough to use that personality for business, in our streets with authority over citizens, carrying guns. Of course, that's not all officers. Most are good people. Most get into law enforcement because they see problems with their community and they want to fix it. I, my co-worker, grew up in, poorer, crime-filled US city, and growing up I saw some rough stuff. Teenagers on M, kids beating each other over gang disputes. 
I decided I was going to fix that. I did a few years as a city cop before I realized I wasn't actually helping much of anything. So I joined. Federal law enforcement agency. Police officers treat symptoms. But the feds find the disease. There were plenty of corrupt cops along the way. And when I ran into them. I kept working. I'm part of the problem. I guess. Because I didn't do something about it. But I figured if I ignore them. Let small things slide, and focused on actually making things better, my good could outweigh their bad. So far, I think I've done good, and in federal law enforcement, the good I do definitely outweighs the bad around me. Yeah, you can tell who the punk cops are, even back in the academy. At first they seem like everybody else, but then you start to notice the little things. Instead of sewing their patches on their shoulders, they are held on with safety pins. Instead of regulation tactical footwear, these guys have 14 whole Doc Martens. Then if you start to look closely, what you thought were normal clean, pressed trousers actually have zippers all over them, and their belts, which should have their gun holster and flashlight and handcuffs, it's just row upon row of spikes. That's when you know you're really dealing with punk cops. This comment deserves more credit. I was a cop for 10 years and I can say I haven't seen corruption but I have seen people make really bad decisions throughout their career. These decisions tarnish the reputation of the other officers in the community. These decisions were along the lines of DUI, DWI, assault, domestic abuse, etc. All took place off duty but gained public attention. The thing is, the larger the organization, the higher the chance of negative actions by individuals. Granted the main difference is the power of the badge, but the same can be said about the civilian workforce. Anytime someone does something negative to affect another person or group, it will have an impact in the public eye. It is important for everyone to hold each other accountable whether you have a hand in public safety or not. Just like the attack that happened yesterday, the driver's peers should have stopped it from happening and alerted the authorities. I can't help but think most cops would characterize the crimes you listed a bit more harshly than really bad decisions when applied to the public. Especially in any situation where any implicit biases of the officer might be a factor. My uncle Pat was an NYPD officer for I think 40 years he joined when he was around 22 and retired around 62 shortly after 9-11. Anyway, during the 70s 80s corruption in the NYC was awful, bribes were common, crooked cops were everywhere. What I remember my uncle Pat telling me though it most cops though, although crooked, weren't really malicious. They were just normal guys in what was at the time an undermanned, underfunded, demoralized police force in a crime ridden city who did get paid a lot. So they'd take the money they could use to help pay the bills in return for not patrolling a block on a certain day and let a crime they probably couldn't prevent anyway happen. Anyway, though, Uncle Pat was your stereotypical NYPD Irish cop. Very strict sense of right and wrong. Didn't take balls. He said he took a few bribes when he first joined in the 60s because it was the norm but after somebody happened to get shot, unrelated to the bribe, on a block he and his more experienced partner choose not to patrol he never took a bribe again because even though there was nothing he could have done in this case, he never wanted someone to get hurt because he wasn't there. During the 80s 90s Uncle Pat actually played a big role in helping crack down on corruption and actually got some award medal from the NYPD or something for it and even got some sort of medal from Mayor Giuliani himself. IDK exactly as I have never been all that interested in cops who remember though there was a scandal a few years ago I think some NYPD officer took a bribe and Uncle Pat, now retired was very upset talking about how this one guy is hurting the whole NYPD's reputation which it's worked so hard to restore. He said that cops that commit crimes are worse than normal criminals because they are abusing the trust put into them by the people of the city that they will protect them. Our protect and serve would be a good spot to pose this question. Typically, there is not a very good response to cop questions on Ask Reddit. The sub you want is our Ask Leo. There's user overlap obviously, but the officers there are actually interested in answering questions. Five years of being military police and working alongside civilian cops. I can honestly say most have no respect for the people they serve. Most think they can do whatever they want and say whatever they want without repercussions. It makes me sick to my stomach. The military has such better restrictions on what you can and can't do. 
I'm ex-military and worked with military police. I can confirm those guys are some of the best trained out there. Two years in and I have had a brief run in with it. First time seeing corruption. I was on a DV call and a FTO was doing some horrible stuff. I had to call for backup and told them it'd take the paper. I was also in training and had to pretty much shut up the officer. It didn't go well for me in the way on training cause the way I took over from someone who had 8 years in the depth while I had 8 days in. Dealing with punk cops, I interject and take over the scene as long as it isn't a sergeant. Who is doing it? Overall I build a rapport with the people I encounter regardless of victim or suspect. Provided everything is handled and seen as controlled. And let them see for themselves that not all are bad. I really would like to answer you but the debt I worked for was and still is corrupt on so many levels and most of it was from upper management. Quick reminder for everyone. There are approximately 1.1 million sworn officers in the US. Not every jurisdiction is the same. Please don't lump all 1.1 million officers into the same category under the umbrella of corruption based on a few news stories you've seen. Even if there were 1000 corrupt cops, that would be a very small percentage point 001, I'm bad at math. Obviously we ideally want 0%, but it sure would be nice if people understood that a handful of bad cop stories doesn't mean they're mostly corrupt. Also, cops get arrested all the time. Just do your own research and stop hating entire groups of people based on the actions of a few. My grandfather worked tougher times where it was more prevalent and told my brother and I the same thing when we joined the force. Don't ever let corruption get in your way. Stand up to it, be the change. It's a lot less prevalent nowadays at least in my area and the one corrupt lieutenant we did have got his butt erased. Unfortunately it was just a forced retirement. But no one ever brings him up. If I were to see it I would have to call it out. There is a difference, however, from being a punk cop who gets his work done efficiently without much harm, and just a egotistical cop looking to abuse his power. It's not as bad as the news makes it out to be especially since they teach ethics in academy. Also not to mention I was commended for going to college before applying and taking ethics human interaction courses, as well as doing well in those classes. My grandfather is really glad it wasn't as bad as it used to be. Police departments are drawn from the local population. That population will define the culture of the department. In areas where crime is accepted as normal and the people don't value law and order, you get cops who have similar values. The police are a reflection of the people they police. Nothing more or less. Local culture matters far more when it comes to the quality crime rate of a city. Hum. That's an extremely interesting view. I have never thought of it that way before. Obligatory not a cop, but I did apply to be one, haven't heard back yet, hopefully will before the end of the year, and I've talked to a lot of cops about it. The short answer, most of the time, there's very little they can do about it, with very little return reward, and extremely high potential of fricking up their own career. One of the last episodes of this season of Brooklyn 99 had a plot about this. Simplifying, the sergeant is up for a promotion but has a run-in with a racist cop. He can report the cop for racism, which will almost certainly yield no results or very minor ones even if it does, but it will likely cost him his promotion. On the one hand, staying silent is how they get away with it. On the other hand, he'd be able to do a lot more wider good if he gets the promotion. A lot of times, it's like that. Most of the time, there's just very little or no way to definitely prove a cop was doing something crooked, and speaking out will likely cost you your career. If you stay silent, you have the opportunity to advance and maybe have the power to see that someday, speaking out won't cost someone their career and will result in more effective punishments. My job has 28 cops, none of which are corrupt. Sure some are jerks to people, but nobody is shaking down people for money, with selling drugs or anything like that. And honesty in this day and age, with cameras everywhere, I'd be surprised if more than 1% were corrupt like that. Not sure why you are getting downvoted. Sounds like you gave a very honest reply. Verified on our protect and serve. These threads always turn into reddit attacking cops. I have never seen corruption but have seen officers arrested by internal affairs for off-duty interactions, DWI, domestic abuse, and alcohol-related situations. My department carries body-worn cameras, 
BWC, and it's impossible to do corrupt things just ask Baltimore PD. This question wasn't meant to bring out attacks on cops, I can say that it seems interactions with police are taking a bad turn. It seems this is due to both police and private citizens attitudes though. I have personally seen some pretty dirty stuff from cops so I do know dirty cops are an issue that needs dealt with. I hate to burst your bubble but there just aren't that many corrupt and punk cops to put up with. If they're corrupt, in my experience they get outed and dealt with pretty quickly. Neither I nor my honest colleagues want a dirty cop tarnishing our badge and reputation. Not sure what you mean by a punk cop so that's harder to answer. If you'd like to provide more detail on that I'd be more than happy to address it. I'm sure you don't want to believe it, but most of us who get into policing do so to contribute to society and help make a difference in people's lives. In most cases, the ones who got into it for self-serving reasons end up leaving in a couple years. The tiny minority of this who stick around will get caught eventually and separated involuntarily. Oh and on a side note, sorry you are getting downvoted for your personal experiences. I do appreciate that you took the time and guts to answer my question with what is evidently an unpopular opinion. It, a lot of simpletons who only deal in absolutes and cannot countenance the concept of some cops being good while others are corrupt. After reading through this thread for quite some time I actually didn't get that feeling at all. Lots of stories for both sides. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.